Hi everyone, I'm Storm Asher. I'm the current visiting curator at Ule Arts and our show Balance is opening tomorrow night. So I'm gonna give you guys a little tour. So you guys know I'm very crazy with my vinyls. So <laughs> thank you Ule team for actually going the extra mile. I think that the space, I really wanted to lend to the architecture of the space. That's also a huge part of what I do with each iteration of borrowed space. So because Oolite has these beautiful curling walls as you come in, that also like played off of the whole idea of bounce. Um, so yeah, all these words like slippery, coiling, up and down, percussion, these were all the words that I sent to the artist. What I loved about this show in general is just that people were willing to take risks and really move into a different direction within their own practice. I feel like a lot of artists get stuck in what people know about their work and what they expect from their work and I just really appreciated seeing all these deviations from what they normally make. PJ Harper's work is just so beyond beautiful and we actually got these sent here from Scotland and it was quite a journey but I'm so glad that they're here because they belong in Miami. Just the way that he uses resin and the clay and evokes kind of like this hyper-realistic Instagram filter culture onto these beautiful bodies um, and bodies of all different shapes and sizes. It's just something that you feel like you would only see in a movie or in a dream. One of the rooms in the show is more about a meditative space and this idea of bouncing back to nature, bouncing back to your true self. Maya Beverly's work is also really interesting and I love how she thinks about adornment and how we covet certain things in our lives. and. When I prompted her about the show, she started thinking about these orbs, these golden orbs. One of the works by Diana, which is actually hanging in her studio, adorned with ostrich feathers, and it's hanging from the ceiling. And as you walk in, it kind of spins around and has this really like lighthearted quality to it. This other piece here, which is made of Spanish moss and also dyed with Spanish moss, um, and she sourced a tree branch from the Everglades. And this is actually a photograph that she printed and then dyed and actually stuffed in the back as well with the Spanish moss. So actually when you're in this room and if you visit her studio, the whole place smells of Miami natural scents. Um, so it's, it's a very like meditative space in here. And I think about olfactory influences as well and how it can bounce you into a memory that you've had kind of like bouncing around in your head and it's only activated by something specific. This work by Alex really fit in here. I think that the ceramic chrome aspects that he had also really played well off of Maya's works, but it was also much more meditative than the other pieces that he provided us for the show. And that's something that's great about Alex's work is that he can evoke any type of emotion. Think about what that could mean, that you're dropping a rose into a heart-shaped puddle. Another one of my favorite works by Alex, even though all of them are my favorite, <laughs> but um, this work is called Nothing Nice, and I just think it's so beautiful. The kinetic energy in this piece is to die for. I mean, from the bees to the pearls, the symmetry, the gold and the black just plays so nicely when you think about the kinetic energy of the air in the springtime versus what it looks like at night. If you guys are familiar with the Miami art scene, I'm sure you've heard of Roscoe B. Fick III. He's an amazing artist and also just an amazing person. And his vibe in itself is bounce. Just when you're with him, you want to jump up and down. <laughs> but um, I really appreciated what he brought to the show because we had this really long studio visit trying to understand how to evoke the rhythm of Miami. Because you normally think of like speakers as like only at the club, but when you're thinking about family and history and how you also celebrate with your family. So he was thinking about all of the songs and the rhythms of his own grandmother's house. And then within the speakers, he put a bunch of images of his grandma, which I think is so beautiful. I always love when artists do something to kind of surprise their normal collector base or their audience. So with Maya Beverly, she also took it to another level when I told her about Bounce. And something like this, I have never seen of her work before. 
A lot of works in the show also really focus on the idea of light bouncing off of you. So artists like Emiliano Henriquez and Alejandro Moros, they both use light in a very intimate way in their paintings. They're both oil painters. And just the way that they use light to bounce off of the skin was so evocative to me and also reminded me of when I'm walking down the street in Miami in like the Art Deco district and different lights and colors are bouncing off of my face. Emiliana Henriquez provided us with this beautiful piece called Divine Trinity. I love the tag, it says medium, like coming out of her thong. Um, and just like the way that she really like showed the light bouncing off of her curves. John Rivas is not only an amazing artist, but also a very close friend of mine. So it was really important to me to have him in this show for one of my first curated endeavors in Miami. Um, not only because of his perspective as a Latin American artist, being from El Salvador and also growing up in New Jersey, but his ability to take advice when it comes to adding different media to his works that people already know about. Um, as you know, I've written about how he started using sewing techniques, which is something that his grandmother did, similar to Roscoe actually, um, where you're kind of bouncing between generations, bouncing between time and space, and what that looks like when you're trying to evoke emotion and something personal. And not only that, but the way that he used the sewing techniques to also make the image of his grandmother in the medallion that he wears on this Cuban link chain around his neck. So this is a very personal piece. It was really great to see how much this idea of adornment came out of the show. Um, when I was asking people to interpret bounce and this idea of celebration, um, these ideas of adornment kept coming up. Kelly Shami also uses jewelry and different types of ways of adorning things that necessarily aren't on the body but are reminiscent of a belly button piercing or a clip piercing or a tongue piercing, different ways that we would adorn ourselves for a night of revelry. So I'm really excited that we were able to get the vinyl lettering also outside. So it faces down onto Lincoln Road, which is basically the promenade of Miami. So everybody, when you're here for Basel, you'll see this sign and you'll know where to go. I hope I see you all here and around for tours. I live like 10 minutes away. So definitely hit me up or hit up Ulay and you can set an appointment and I'll give you all a tour. Thanks everyone.